What is going on, everybody? Welcome back. Welcome back to World of Warships. This is... Oh, man. This is a game that I have not played in a real long time. And let me tell you, a lot of changes have come to this game. Now, if my voice sounds off or different, I'm sorry. It's really late. I'm kind of tired, but I wanted to knock this out before I went to bed. Um, so... I, you know, there were very good reasons that I left World of Warships. I was not enjoying the game in the same way that I was when I first started. And I, you know, for lack of a better term, I kind of became a little jaded. Um, but at the same time, I was also in the middle of college, so I really couldn't invest the time that I really felt I needed to to stay consistently good at the game so I gave it a break I think you know right around um, that first Japanese super ship the one with the bigger than 18 inch guns I think that's right around when I stopped stopped playing so stop playing consistently I should say because I got on here and there but I'm back I'm gonna try to have some fun and um you know, what better way to have fun than shoot up an Omaha, the Tier 5 American light cruiser? Unfortunately, it doesn't work out that way. We actually get a ricochet, which is shocking. If you know anything about the Omaha, you know it's got paper-thin armor. But it shows flat, flat broadside. KGV has a quick reload, so we uh, send one. I sent that kind of on a prayer more than anything. I didn't think it would connect, but um, yeah. It definitely connected. It definitely connected. We get a devastating strike and first blood. It's been a while since I've gotten either of those. And, you know, I don't really care if it came from a tier 5 light cruiser that's made of citadels. I will take it. Now, I underestimated how tightly the Alba could turn as he made his turn out. So we only get one overpen on him, which is unfortunate, but... <clears throat> That's kind of, you know, I don't know what's up with this game, but my aim has been horrible in some matches. Maybe not my aim, but the way the shells land, it's really wonky. Um, but anyway, back to the game. Unfortunately, our Furutaka just died. And I see this and I'm going, oh, crap. Um, maybe I don't want to push forward. So I just, I pump the brakes. I'm undetected, but that's about to change because there's a broadside Königsberg. And just like the Omaha, Königsbergs are made of citadels, but he turns in and we only get an overpen. Nice. Credit to this uh, this player though, if I think, because there's a Königsberg that makes it um, basically to the end of the match and I don't think it's this guy actually. Maybe it is, but I think it, uh, if there are two Königsbergs, I don't think this guy makes it, but if there's only one, this guy makes it to the end and becomes a problem. Get a nice citadel on him and an incapacitation. But I'd imagine the damage control uh, consumable was ready to go. And um, repaired his engine and got going and left this area very quickly. Not that I blame him. Now right now we're in a bit of a spot. Our team up in the north, a lot of, well... Some of them have died, but our Akatsuki, or Akatsuki just killed in New Orleans, so that's pretty good. But we're all stuck down here in the south. We, we need to start going up north. We gotta go help our team. There's only two ships, three ships, I guess, down here, uh, two cruisers and a battleship. But the rest of them are up north, and they are pushing our guys down, so we gotta go help them out. See a broad, nope, not broadsiding Alba, uh, angling Alba, so kind of wish I had the AG here, but I have it loaded, so took a shot, didn't expect much, if anything. Notice that the submarine is active, and unfortunately we completely missed the Alba, and he's about to absolutely decimate our cash a lot, so submarines are interesting. They are very interesting. 
and we got very lucky there with the Poltava salvo missing us, but of course at this point the Alba is showing us a nice flat broadside, and I've got the HE loaded. Brilliant. And we only get one pen out of that. With Okay, see what I mean? Those shells fell way short, and I don't think I was aiming short. So, and this has been happening to me a lot, where I aim at the waterline, or what I think is the waterline, and all my shells still still fall short. But then I aim a little bit above, and they sail over the top of the ship. So, I don't know if it's just consistent bad luck, but it seems way too consistent to be bad luck, if that makes any sense. Take another shot at the Alba. This one does a little bit better. We get two pens and deal 6k to him. And of course the Alba is a tier 6 cruiser. There's no heal. It's not a premium. Now I think that little white line there was the submarine, but I'm not sure. Now I'm pinging my team down there because they did basically the exact opposite of what I wanted them to do. I wanted them to push north through that island but you know in retrospect it does work out for them they kill the poltava they kill the other cruiser there because he's no longer there he comes back towards me um <laughs> but yeah no i just i wish they had taken a different route but again it works out um again should have had the he or the ap loaded we only did 2600 but we set a fire and incapacitated one of his turrets so, I'll take that, and hello, Mr. Submarine. I have an airstrike for you. Unfortunately, he pinged us with uh, sonar, but I popped our repair. Something I kind of regret doing, again, in retrospect. Um, and there's some more torpedoes. What the hell were they from? I have no idea. Is there a Kotsky near here? No. Maybe. Oh, man, I don't even remember. But we get a direct hit on that sub and set a fire to the Königsberg. It is the same Königsberg as before, but we need to start getting the cap control. And so I enter the cap knowing full well there's a submarine there and a, or I'm sorry, there was a cruiser there. Wait, no, there still is. I was looking at the wrong cruiser. Those are some Alba torpedoes, I believe. And there is a Rook right in front of me. And the sub has just perfect firing position on me right now i he's basically at my three o'clock now of course i do have the ap loaded nice flat broadside of the rook and decent actually no that was pretty atrocious <laughs> we only got one pen and it was like not great damage but here comes the Königsberg, and now at this point i think we'll yeah, we get pinged by the sub again. And these uh, homing torpedoes are just so silly to me. Knocks out our engine. Uh, my repair's up in four minutes, or uh, four seconds when I sent, said that. But I didn't want to use it, because I know the Königsberg can be a fire-breathing dragon of sorts. So I hold off. I'm drifting kind of out of the line of fire of the submarine. I'm quite all right with what's going on, essentially. Like, I'm quite okay with the position I'm in. Briefly spot the sub, but then he disappears again, which was just bizarre. Um, so I send out my airstrike. I think we get another hit here. I'm not, I don't fully remember. No, it doesn't look like it. But unfortunately, we're going to drift out of the cap, so we will... The critical part of being in the cap right there at this point is preventing the enemy team from getting point income. And unfortunately, we do drift out of it, but we managed to get the kill on the Königsberg. So that took a few points away. Uh, I have drifted out of the cap. I'm going to try to reverse in. And one of the nice things about the engine being knocked out is we missed a bunch of torpedoes, both from the Akats Akatsuki, I don't know why I keep trying to say Akatsuki, Akatsuki and the Königsberg. Now the Rook, making a bit of a questionable play here, pushing into a destroyer in smoke and a KGV. British battlecruisers don't exactly have the best armor for brawling. Rook 
regardless, I mean, KGV has pretty damn good armor, too. We probably ate more than we should have, and I think he's got 16-inch guns, but he's showing a flat broadside. Like, what are you doing, man? Of course I have the HE loaded, but <laughs> not that it matters. We end up uh, sending him to Davy Jones' locker. Now, the Poltava is starting to be a little concerning. Getting a little close there. Soviet battleship, I believe he would get the enhanced accuracy within 10 kilometers, or is it 12? I forget. I forget exactly what they did with that line. In fact, uh, the less I say about Soviet battleships, the better. And now I got a little excited there, <laughs> opened up my windows, but um, we get pinged by the sub sort of in this spawn area. I think I really messed up this airstrike and we uh, eat another torpedo. My repairs on a long cooldown, of course. Can't remember why. It jams our rudder. It floods, of course. And uh, we're not looking too good here, fellas. I'm not going to lie. Um, we're at 7k health and falling. Sub 6k now. And we've still got We've still got two heals, but it's... Is it going to be enough? And that's kind of what I was asking myself. Is it going to be enough? Are these two heals going to be enough? Fortunately, you can heal 100% of flood damage because it's light damage, right? But still, 2300, I'm one hit away from dying. And at this point, I still thought the Akatsuki was in this area. But it, Lord knows where he went. Um, and uh, the sub, for whatever reason, is deciding to chase us? Like, dude, I get that you have a historical 30 knot speed on the surface, but, like, come on. We can see you, and we have methods to count counter you. They're not incredibly good, but we can still get you. And I, I think I managed to dodge all the torpedoes. And their second submarine shows up right here, but fortunately our Akatsuki nails him with depth charges. Which I, for some reason, I thought that was the, uh, the destroyer. I thought we got the destroyer, but nope, it was the sub. And that was a little bit of a nasty surprise for me at the time. Just getting some water there because I've been talking a lot today, apparently. Uh, went out with some, some friends to a brewery in town, in Denver. Good good place. Denver's a nice city. I still prefer Fort Collins in Colorado. Uh, and that was the nasty surprise. <laughs> and right after I said, stay alive, our uh, Helena gets absolutely, um, absolutely flabbergasted at the existence of torpedoes in World of Warships. <laughs> So, not ideal. We have two caps to their one. We don't have a point advantage, and unfortunately the Akatsuki is about to make it a two cap to one advantage for the enemy team. So we we gotta act right now. And they still have a cruiser. There's a Fiji over there. And I actually this is this is this is some of the things that I need to think about more consistently. It's easy to think about this in hindsight, right? But at the time, Duke of York says he'll go north and pincer. He's going to help out the, uh, the Fuso with that Fiji, effectively making a two or a one versus one, a two versus one. Now, even if you're in a battleship versus a cruiser or a destroyer, you should always want to take a two versus one over a one versus one. So always think about that like as a teammate when it comes down to the 11th hour of these games. How can you turn something that might be not necessarily unfavorable? I think a 1v1, depending on the ship and the captain, can still be very doable. But how can you make something that may not be as ideal or actually not ideal into something that's a 2v1 where you stand a better chance of actually winning? So that's something to kind of think about. It's something I learned to bit more in War Thunder, believe it or not. Um, always take the unfair engagement. And oftentimes in this game, the unfair engagement is making a 1v1 a 2v1. 
Now, looking at the minimap, I was getting a little concerned for our Fuso. Uh, half HP facing off against a Fiji, and unfortunately just, you know, not doing anything as this Fiji charges in. And Fiji has torpedoes, which is very concerning. But, you know, this is World of Warships. If you're not using your ship as a torpedo, are you are you even playing the game correctly? I don't think so. Fuso rams the hell out of the Fiji, and um, I believe can heal all that back because it's light damage. But who needs torpedoes when you've got a Fuso? Now this is some uh, critique friendly friendly critique I have for our Akatsuki player. Um, Use your guns. He is using them, but just watch. He's going to melt away at this enemy Akatsuki. Because the enemy Akatsuki can use all of his guns, while our friendly can only really use his front guns. And it's going to bite him in the ass. Look at that damage chunk. And of course, our guy wanted to send torpedoes against the enemy. And rather than shooting him, he sends his torpedoes. Now, granted, we didn't get that great of a hit right there. I should have led more, but yeah, just look at our guy's health. Like, dude, you started out roughly at parity, almost. I think the enemy guy was full HP, and our guy had lost about, I don't know, three, 4,000? So it was, it could have gone either way, and man, their Akatsuki just nuked him, or melted him. That's not a nuke, that's a melting, uh... Gosh, like I said, it's tired. And at this point, you know, I'm thinking, oh crap, we gotta retreat, we gotta fall back, we don't wanna push this guy. Um, but we end up not doing that. But this also comes back to what I was saying earlier about making a 1v1, a 2v1. I'm sticking with the Duke of York. We'll watch each other's back. Now, I fully admit I don't know too much about the uh, Akatsuki outside of, I believe it was ambushed at the Naval Battle of Guadalcanal by the USS Atlanta and just got decimated. But in-game, she's got dangerous torpedoes, and there's four of them. But the thing that I didn't know is, well, I guess in retrospect now, I do see that she launched a full spread at me. And apparently it has a pretty quick reload with them. I always thought it was a slower reload, but maybe I'm wrong. And I don't know if she gets access to uh, the torpedo reload booster, but that's a smokescreen that that player set. So we know, even if even if um, it does get access to it, we know this player is not running it, because it replaces the smokescreen. That's neither here nor there. Um, we're still spotted. We're trying to... Scout this guy out, but I think the concealment on that thing is like, gosh, I don't know, what is it? Is it 5.8? I think it might be 5.8. It's it's a stealthy little torpedo boat. So, the the Duke of York and I are definitely in uh, the at the disadvantage here, but look at the time, and look at the points, and look who I see. Hello, buddy. Duke of York sets a fire. My shells apparently miss, but that fire gave us just enough chance to get off another salvo. We get another hit, do like, I don't know, a thousand damage probably. But look at the look at the timer and look at the points. We managed to to eke out a win, and I think the critical part of this was the Duke of York getting into that cap and freezing the enemy team's point income. So we get the win, and goodness gracious, what a match. I think this is the most fun I've had in the KGV ever. Uh, I've really, really struggled with this ship, but this match kind of... Everything kind of clicked for me. I was like, okay, I, I'm kind of understanding it now. I see why the AP might not be as desirable, for lack of a better term, but I also just dev struck a guy who happened to be a tier 5 cruiser, but we don't need to talk about that. But anyway, you know, results-wise, I have a ton of modifiers on this thing. Like, 
uh, almost three three hundred thousand credits, almost ten thousand ship XP, and a little bit under twenty four hundred free XP. Awards wise, we got Confederate Devastating Strike. I believe that's Dreadnought in the middle and First Strike. We did eighty four thousand damage, which is not not the highest. I will say. Some of you are probably watching this and just going, I do that in my sleep in the KGV. And like, okay, cool. I, I, I don't. And this was an exciting game for me. It started out with, it started out good and kind of ended good. I feel like this team really didn't make any critical mistakes. But I also felt like my play was good while still offering some points where I could kind of reflect and point out like, hey, I kind of messed up here and here's why. So that's my reasoning. Yes. I lost my train of thought tremendously there. So we will go on to the team score. We finished second. Um... Duke of York finished above us. Solid effort by by that player. Uh, both of us got three kills, and then the Akatsuki got two. Um, but just under 2,000 uh, base XP, which is a little disappointing, I'm not going to lie. But I'm not going to complain too much. So, yeah. And then as far as the detailed report goes, you know, we did all the damage to that Omaha. Uh, took every single point of it. Uh, did 18k to the Königsberg, which I think is about oh, a third, two th- or a third, god, they wish, two thirds of that thing's health. Then only 11k to the Rook, which I think has something like 54 or so, something. You can look it up on your own time, I'm not going to do it. But um, only 11k, but we managed to secure the kill just with our HE salvo. The Alba, we have only, we only did 11k to the the Cashelot, we did 10k to, and I think that thing only has like 11 or 12k health, so we were pretty dang close to getting getting a kill on that guy. Credits and XP wise, we we ended up taking home 240,000 credits, <clears throat> which is not a bad haul for a tech tree ship. Uh, free XP, 2388. Our base XP with the win bonus is was uh, 3267, so pretty good. Pretty happy with that. Um, Commander XP got 7,000, and 352 of that is going to go to our Elite Commander XP pool. And yes, I do have a premium account. It's... If whatever. Let people enjoy the game the way they want to. I got a good deal on a premium account. So, yeah. Unfortunately, I don't have the captain build in front of me, but it's a pretty standard, I guess you would call it a tank build. Preventative maintenance. I have priority target. I get way too much utility out of it. And then my tier 3 skill is... Oh, gosh. What is it? Um... I forget exactly which one I took. Oh my goodness. But this is not a full point, a full 10 point captain. So my next skill would probably be um, concealment expert. And then after that, I honestly might go for something like um, damage control expert. I think it's called, it used to be called fireproof. But they reworked the uh, commander uh, traits. So I need to review that and just figure out what's ideal. But yeah. Overall, KGV, not my favorite ship, but if I get more games like this where I can play like I did and get good damage like I did in this, I might actually enjoy it. Um, what are your thoughts on the KGV? I'm genuinely curious to see what some of the thoughts are because I personally have struggled with it early on, um, but not everybody is... Not, I'm not like everybody. I mean, that's just part of the territory of being human. We're inherently different, right? So leave a comment. Tell me what you think about the KGV and how, any pointers on how to play it. Anything you saw like, hey, don't do that. Uh, or, hey, keep doing that. So things like that. 
leave a like if you enjoyed this. I'm sorry, I'm kind of rambling. Again, it is late. Um, leave a like. Leave a like if you liked this video. Otherwise, you know, please don't hit the downvote button. That would really hurt my feelings. If you want to see more from me and more ramblings of an incoherent, very tired person, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. I'm looking forward to getting back into uh, World of Warships. But, you know, until then, I hope you all have a good rest of your weekend. It's a, it's a technically a Sunday morning here, but it's Saturday night. Hope you have a good Sunday, then a good work week. Anyway, I will see you in the next one. Take care, and bye bye